Hi and welcome to another video. I finally found a solution to my ongoing filtration problems for water and alcohol. And that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to document um, my uh, trip from beginning to now of what I've been using and uh, how I've actually progressed. So you can see uh, one of the most popular videos I've put out has actually been my making a cheap or economical alcohol filter. So um, it drew a lot of attention. So maybe this one will too. When I first started, I actually had this fellow here. It's a steel spirits uh, filter. It takes a, uh, a cylindrical cartridge like that. That cartridge is actually clamped underneath here via this. And when the top is on and that is clamped, there's a vacuum inside there. So you need to actually loosen that until you have sufficient flow to actually fill that up. A lot of mucking around, but uh, when you got it right, it worked fine. As I said, uh, uh, a vacuum starts when you put this on top. So it slows down the, the trickle. But more to the point, I quite often didn't have that much filter, that much um, distillate to actually filter. So it was quite inappropriate uh, for, for a number of different reasons. Um, I wasn't happy with the end up result, and also it was too complicated and large. So that's what spurred me along to actually get or make <laughs> my economical um, filter. This is just for, as I said, spirits. Now that's basically just a, uh, a Coke bottle. Inside I've got uh, a, a water bottle container, so I put uh, some filter paper down the bottom, jammed it in. And the interesting thing about this, I just jammed the filter paper in and then poured water in. And next thing you know, you can see how fast it's dripping out. So you jam some more in, it slows it down, jam some more in, slows it down again. Then put my carbon in and then put this on top. And then I've got an economical filter. It worked. It did the job pretty well. So I, I'd filter, pour it back in, filter, pour it back in, filter, pour it back in. So it did, a, it did the job very, very well. So I've got no problems with that. Apart from the fact it's a little bit ancient. <laughs> I then went shopping for some other bits and pieces. I'm going to talk to you about that now. Pull them all into the centre here so you can see them all. Lots of bits and pieces, eh? I started hunting around and I found... Um, oh, well, that fellow's going to run away. I started hunting around for a more permanent... Um, solution and better quality solution than my little plastic filter here and I finally found um, one place which actually gave me a good solution uh, for an inline gravity fed filter and uh, I, I rather liked it so I ordered it it was this was about $120 um, but uh, I liked it so um, I bought it and uh, used it a few times. It had a few problems, but I'll discuss those problems in a short while. So I'm just simply putting it together as we go here. Um, it was very appropriate, but not exactly 100% to what I wanted, and it did have a couple of issues. So what I've done here, as you can see, there's a little valve here, and that just controls the flow coming out. There's a washer inside. On the top, just a little tube and some little washers going on. On the top was basically a uh, holding area. I'll find my other bits and pieces. Where's my, there it is. So it's just a holding area on the top. High quality stainless steel. Uh, it's a holding area on the top. I've got it put together. So as you can see here, it's actually quite an effective and large in comparison to that. In comparison to that, it's a large volume holding area, which is relatively simple. You actually um, put it in, drain it, put it through again, drain it, do as many times as you want. It comes also, I, I came also with the, a couple of these little brackets. Now, these brackets are meant to actually hold it onto a piece of wood um, if you want to use it. I used it a few times. There was, a, there was an issue with this. There's no filter in this area going down to that very small nozzle. So the biggest and easiest, or the easiest solution I could find is a, a diaphragm of 
um, coffee paper down at the bottom, and that actually basically allowed the moisture to come through. It actually served as a better kind of filter too. So that was quite an effective filter, but not exactly 100% what I wanted. Now, I still had issues with water, uh, having good quality water. So I wanted to actually make a filter which was good for uh, filtering water and good for filtering alcohol. So I hunted around and I found one. That's this little baby here. This is actually very, very effective. Um, I'll put it together for you and explain it as I go. So we've got a little filter for the top. And you've got a little area there that goes on. Again, these types of stainless steel valves go around here to hold it shut. And... Um, Looks like rather impressive, doesn't it? Well, as you probably saw from the thumbnail, <laughs> it is quite an impressive unit. Now, this is basically a filter. Remember, I said put some uh, put some uh, coffee paper on the other one to filter out to, to stop the charcoal from going through. That's just basically a mesh filter. And I'll explain what these parts are as soon as I put the thing together pro properly for you. I found this extremely effective. Now, this one came with a couple of these brackets. If I wanted to, I can actually mount it onto some uh, timber. But uh, this here was very effective. Actually, what I'll do, I'll, I'll use my other camera here and I'll show you close up what it is. All right, now as you can see here, I've got, uh, that's the um, blind in. Sorry, that, yeah, that's, no, that's the line out. That's the line out. That's the one with the standard mesh um, washer on the bottom. That one is the line in. I just simply identified it with a T for top. Now, what I do with this is very, very simple. If you can see here, I actually have um, um, uh, a, a reducer to take that down to a smaller size and that and I put a heap of uh, plumber's tape in there to actually make them fit. But what's interesting about this, it takes just some beer line uh, hose, push that in, it's locked. Push that in, it's locked. All I do with this now is I, I just simply tie it on to a container at the top or whatever, and I will have that going into some water or the distillate, and that going into my catchment area, now to start it going, I just simply suck on the bottom and start siphoning it and it starts going through. Now the interesting thing about this, you can have it on full blast input at the top and you can have it regulated to a, a slow output on the bottom. You can regulate how fast that's dripping out. When you're going to change it over and you want to actually change this distillate or maybe you want to put the water through again or the distillate through again, Turn both of these off. Put the hose out, put the hose out, change it around, put that hose back in, put that hose down the bottom, turn it on again, and the siphon continues. Very effective. I use this now for uh, making sure I've got some good quality water to uh, distill with. And uh, that's also, use <laughs> the same stuff for uh, filtering the distillate that comes out. Very, very effective. Now, that cost, I don't know, I think it was about 120, 130 bucks, whatever it was. Uh, I'll put links, and that comes from Kegland, by the way. I did have issues sourcing this. I'll, I'll put a link to the, the whole page. They sell all these things individually and they're on a separate uh, um, um, page, and you, they basically supply them, you just simply put it together. So I did have problems buying the tube and the reducer, uh, stainless steel reducer nuts here. So I simply did a search on the internet and I found two extra places to supply the tube and supply the reducers. And uh, it's as good as anything. There may be supply issues with China, who knows what's happening at the moment, but uh, that there is an extremely effective filter. And uh, one... Uh, it's, which is going to give you a whole, a whole heap of <laughs> great service. In line, you could, if you wanted to, put this pipe into a larger container with a permanent fixture, but um, I'm just simply using it 
supported by a piece of string and just leaving it dangle in there and it coming down the bottom. Very effective. That's my friends. I'm very happy with that. It's going to give me a much better quality product and give me less fails as far as the water issues that I had. So hopefully I'll put the, oh, this by the way was from a place called Cheeky Peak Brewery. Now I did have a look on Cheeky Peak Brewery. They do have uh, an inline adapter for the top, which basically has, so uh, you simply put one of these tubes on it on the outside. And so you can actually have a, a feeding in, in line. So just explore it. If you want to get one of those, they're around about a hundred bucks. Um, Cheeky Peak Brewery, I'll put a link in the description. And that one comes from Kegwagon. I'll put a link in the description. Very, very functional. So uh, that's it for this video. I um, just brought you up to date with what I'm doing with my filtration. Uh, I'm very happy with that. I've got a lot of stuff here now. But um, it's doing a wonderful job. Now, it's been fun uh, to this point getting all these videos together. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching them. I certainly enjoyed, enjoyed uh, putting them together for you. And uh, if you managed to get something out of this, great. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and share. It does help me a lot. Uh, I'd like to be able to get YouTube to recognise uh, this my series of videos in more places around the world. And that's the best way of doing it. So uh, until next time, happy brewing.